Okay, so this is once again called how much can fit on this stand?
How often are you surprised by each other? I don't you think every gig, Chris? E every gig, there's always moments of... Every single gig, which is so fresh about it, every single gig, one of us does something totally wacky. So what are the three traits, if you had to say, and I'll ask Chris the same thing, if you had to say three traits about Chris that you like most in terms of these, these gigs and these performances, what would be the three? Because of course there's so much that you guys yeah. enjoy about each other, but if you had to say the three sort of top of your list things, what would those be? We orchestrate quickly. It's because of playing 18 years together, but it just, you also musically grow in the same sort of direction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, surprises, groove, and the communication. Mm -hmm. maybe. It's hard to narrow down. All right, Chris, your turn. Playing melody all the time. He's playing a line or a melody or something through the music, not just a bunch of rhythmic substance. The surprises are always really good. You know, it's always something new. And, you know, a lot of times, like t tonight particularly, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time we played. I really know what's going to happen. So at any time, any instrument, we can go to any language and, and we get that immediately. Yeah. So it's, it's really helpful to open up the possibilities. Yeah. You know. You say you're from a melodic improvisation background. What does that mean to each of you individually? What does that statement mean? Like, oh, I played vibraphone or... I played what? piano yeah. first and then cello. And then off of cello I went to percussion, but the first instrument I, was, I got was a two and a half octave marimba. So all the background was... Melodic first, rhythmic second, maybe. Mm, mm. And I got more, in high school, got more into drum set congas, but still kept all the mallet things going. Yeah, for me, it's just uh, you know learning a bunch of technique and a bunch of higher level things, and then at some point, you're going, there's just no meaning to all of this. Mm. You know, including classical percussion, I would learn things with you know eleven groupings after eleven groupings, and the mallet change every two bars, and I just be like. Can you sing this? Does it have a flow to it? Or is it just mathematical architecture? Right. So you go, whoa, a lot of things that drummers play, you can hear, you know, very famous drummers taking solos, and it sounds like if you took that on another instrument, it'd be just like a, a piano player running scales. Mm. Just, like no content. There's no contour, there's no melodic skips, there's nothing like other, any, any other instrumentalist has to deal with. Phrasing, breath, you know, interesting melodic contour, being relevant to the piece that's there. Right. So it's really a fascinating question, and that's exactly why we ask her. <laughs> because nobody else is going to come up with that but Lynn. <laughs> so it makes me sit here and go, oh, no.